Today, we're ranking eight of the most exciting projects in the Cosmos ecosystem. And these you should be excited about because Cosmos is the king of the app chain movement, which means a lot of these projects are going to be absolutely massive in their own right. But regardless of the hype, I'll always aim to be fair, which is why I'll share my pros and cons before my final verdict. Let's get started with the first project, which is building a decentralized super cloud. If we look past the buzzwords, it's basically a marketplace for computing resources. And that marketplace includes a slew of NVIDIA GPUs for people to rent. So that actually makes them AI adjacent because all the AI companies out there need those GPUs in order to train their models or power their applications. Anyhow, the project is called Akash Network. And in terms of things I like, well, first would have to be their narrative, duh. Akash sits at the intersection of two of the hottest narratives in all of crypto, AI and DPIN. By now we know how powerful narratives are. So since Akash can claim them both, this is extremely bullish for them. But besides that, another thing I like about Akash is his tokenomics. All their tokens are unlocked, which means that we don't have to worry about getting diluted in the future, which is quite amazing. But before you get too excited, there are some things I dislike as well. For example, Akash's usage is extremely low, producing mostly empty blocks on their network. And this is a problem because without enough usage, they can't build the network effects needed to become a useful marketplace. So this suggests that Akash doesn't deserve his billion plus valuation, at least from a fundamental level. But even if we ignore that, another massive concern is the competition that it faces. You see, Akash has to compete with the likes of Amazon and Microsoft, who also have their own cloud computing services. These are companies with unlimited resources. So trying to compete with them is going to be an enormous uphill battle. And it's something I frankly doubt Akash can do. If anything, their destiny is to become a niche offering for companies that want something cheaper and don't necessarily need a fancy enterprise support team behind the service. So as the first project on the list, Akash goes in at the number one spot, but I'm not so sure that it can keep that. Now, the next project has been called, quote, the project Luna always wanted to be. It actually launched on Terra back in the day, but after Luna collapsed, this project went elsewhere and found a home in Cosmos instead. Its name is Kujira, and you must be wondering if it really deserves that lofty title as the project Luna wanted to be. Well, let's find out by starting with the things I like about it. The first thing has to be their poppin' ecosystem. They've got a bunch of solid DeFi projects that are already generating revenue. There's a liquidation protocol, a liquidity engine, and even a stable coin that's much safer than Luna's UST. But I think the best part about all this is that 98% of the fees generated by these products are shared with Kuji stakers, giving people an enticing reason to buy and hold. And speaking of Kuji, I like its tokenomics too. All its tokens are in circulation and over 50% of them are state, so that indicates a healthy network. But I think what impresses me the most may be their market cap to TVL ratio, especially as it compares to its top rival, Injective. Injective is a great project, of course, but Kujira's TVLs is a staggering eight times higher than Injective's, while its market cap is almost 10 times lower. This is mind blowing, and it suggests that a repricing could be in store for Kujira. Anyhow, let's not get too carried away as there are some things to dislike as well. First of which is their staking rewards. Their APY is actually quite low, with some people even describing it as practically zero. It seems that most people are staking for airdrops rather than yield. But if those perks dry up in the future, then people may decide to unstake and leave for opportunities in other ecosystems. So that's quite worrisome. But another concern of mine is that Kujira faces tough competition, especially from his top rival, Injective. I mentioned earlier that Kujira's market cap to TVL ratio is way better, but Injective has a lot of its own advantages as well. For example, they have some massive backers and a ton of funding behind them, which could explain why they've grown way more than Kujira despite having worse fundamentals. That being said, I still think Kujira has what it takes to potentially surpass Injective, which is why I'm putting them at the number one spot on our list. Now, this next project you may think is just another NFT marketplace, but if you think that, you'd be sorely mistaken. 
because this is the first interoperable layer one blockchain that's tailor-made for NFTs. And it's the first interchain NFT marketplace. It's called Stargaze. And in terms of things I like about it, well, first would have to be the focus on the end user. You see, it's no secret that NFT marketplaces have royally screwed up in the past few years. They've earned a negative reputation by being expensive, insecure, opaque, and generally screwing over their users at every opportunity. But Stargaze is not like that, and they've created some pretty cool features to serve their users. For example, they have a built-in feature that gives creators the flexibility to choose the type of launch they want, be it a traditional mint, auction format, you name it. They also have super low fees by virtue of being built on Cosmos. So you don't have to worry about those Ethereum type gas fees that have plagued the other marketplaces in the past. But besides all that, another thing I like about Stargaze is its tokenomics. Their initial token allocation looks extremely fair with only 12% of it being allocated to insiders. So we don't have to worry about manipulation as much when it comes to stars. So all that sounds great so far, but for some reason the stars token is doing terribly and this is the main thing I don't like about it. It's down 90% from all time highs and its market cap is still below 40 million which is tiny for a project that's over two years old. This could be because of its low staking yields, but whatever the reason, it's still a worrisome trend that we need to keep an eye on. However, all things considered, I do like what Stargaze is doing, and I think it could really boom when NFT season returns. That's why I'm putting it between Kujira and Akash in at number two. All right, let's move on to the super important world of rollups and app chains. So this project is not your typical blockchain, but rather a blockchain platform through which other application specific layer two rollups, AKA roll apps can be built and deployed. It's called Dimension and it makes it super easy for people to deploy optimistic rollups. But what else is there to like about it? Well, the big thing is it's built in AMM that's accessible to any rollup on its platform. Rollups utilize Dimension Hub as their settlement layer, enabling them to share liquidity with one another. And this is really brilliant because it fixes the issue of fragmented liquidity that often plagues the other L2s out there. It also allows Dimension to capture more revenue from protocol swap fees, which is great for its total value locked and other metrics. But another thing I like is the utility of its DIM token. As more and more rollups are deployed on the platform, the demand for DIM should naturally grow. Also, the staking yields are really strong and holders get governance rights, meaning there's a lot of reasons for people to hold and stake the token. But perhaps their greatest strength is their airdrop flywheel approach, with several airdrops already in store for DIM stakers. This stake to airdrop approach has been super successful for other projects like Celestia, so it should drive demand for the token and bolster its price further. However, this approach could also backfire as it could become a burden for the project in the future. There's no doubt that in the short term, giving access to airdrops will drive demand for the token. But what happens when airdrop season is over? People may choose to take profits instead, and this, combined with a decrease in the speculative demand from retail, could really tank the price. So it's a double-edged sword in my opinion. But beyond that, I also have some concerns about its tokenomics. With only 14% in circulation and a whopping 35% allocated to insiders, I'm not sure that I'd want to hold their token long term. That's why all things considered, I'm putting Dimension at the bottom of my running list. Next up, we have something called a Sovereign Dex which serves as the primary liquidity hub and trading venue for the entire Cosmos ecosystem. It has an AMM, of course, but it also has a bunch of other apps and features such as a stable swap, concentrated liquidity, and in-protocol MEV capture. I'm talking about Osmosis, and there's so much to like about it. First are all the innovative things they've built for the Cosmos ecosystem. For example, they brought Bitcoin to Cosmos in the form of Nomic Bitcoin. And they also have something called Pipette, a liquidity and bridging solution that connects Cosmos to modular chains like Celestia. So those are all amazing, of course, but Osmosis has even greater ambitions. They are merging with the lending app Yumi to form an ultimate DeFi hub on Cosmos. By combining the two networks, this opens up a whole new world of possibilities, enabling new features on the exchange that was not possible before. 
So this gets super exciting, especially when you consider how well Osmosis has been doing in its own right. They had an unbelievable end to 2023, with their overall trading volume up a staggering 241% to 3.7 billion, and its circulating market cap soaring by 400% from just under 200 million to nearly 1 billion. So clearly they're doing a lot of things right. But what about the things we should be wary of? Well, first is my doubt that Osmo can perform as well as it did last cycle. It absolutely rocketed in 2022, peaking above $11. But this was for a range of speculative and circumstantial reasons that have very little to do with how good of a DEX it is. So experiencing those conditions again will be highly unlikely and hence the token's performance might be underwhelming as a result. But perhaps an even greater concern is that Osmosis liquidity relies on rewards. By incentivizing pools with Osmo, it leaves itself quite vulnerable. If the rewards decrease, so does the liquidity. And that makes me nervous as an investor. That being said, the sheer amount of positives do outweigh the negatives, which is why I'm putting it as the new number two, just below Kujira. All right, as a content creator, I really like what this next project is doing. It's a peer-to-peer -peer network that empowers creators and communities to mint, manage, distribute, and monetize their media assets. It's called Omniflix. In terms of what I like about it, well, first is how diverse and user-friendly its suite of products are. It has a studio, marketplace, a governance slash staking dashboard, a content publishing portal, and much more. If we look at the Omniflix Studio, its interface is amazing as it combines NFT creation slash management with broader media and community engagement tools. Also, there's a ton of stuff supported on there, including video, audio, image, and text. Focusing on their video part for a second, we can see some real potential as it has over 600 videos on there already. This is amazing to see in a space where adoption is often lacking. For example, when we look at videos on Open Theta, a dApp on Theta network, we couldn't really find any that worked. And that's a project worth nearly $3 billion. So there's some really cool stuff here for sure. But unfortunately, when we look at the negatives, there are some glaring red flags as well. First, it's just how small of a footprint it has. I couldn't find any stats on things like overall volume or number of transactions, which is not good, but perhaps an even greater concern. It's just how small its community is. Omniflix joined Twitter in 2019, but it only has 36K followers, while its Reddit group has less than 200 people in it. With that level of support, it just won't be able to reach the meteoric heights that it hopes to. And that's something that the team has to address. Additionally, its Flix token is only available on Osmosis, which limits its exposure. Yet despite this, its market cap is up there with Stargaze, and given how great the Stargaze marketplace is, this seems odd to me. And it potentially suggests that Omniflix is overvalued. So although I do love what they're trying to do, it's just not there yet, and it's going to be low dimension as a result. Now, if that last project was all about creators, this next project is all about developers. It's a blockchain operating system that makes it insanely quick and easy to develop and deploy dApps. The name is Andromeda OS. In terms of things I like about it, well, first is definitely its impact on app development time. Andromeda OS has a vast library of smart contracts and a no-code builder that can drop development time from months to minutes. Furthermore, they've got great economic incentives for developers through a custom fee system on their Andromeda digital objects. We all know that developers are the lifeblood of any ecosystem, so it's great to see Andromeda do everything they can to support devs. Now, another thing I like has to do with Andromeda's past and future. You see, they were able to survive a brutal bear market after launching in 2021. But not only have they managed to grow with relatively little VC backing, they've also put themselves in a great position for the future. You can see this by looking at their roadmap, which looks quite promising. They're launching their mainnet in April, and beyond that, there's several other things lined up that will give them a boost as they come. However, if we turn to the negatives, I do have one big concern, which is that it just doesn't seem that friendly or suitable for most investors. For starters, over 40% of their tokens are allocated to insiders, and there hasn't been any incentivized airdrop as well. To make things worse, this project doesn't really have a narrative that most people can latch onto. Unlike GameFi or DeFi, 
there are no interactive elements for people to get on board with, and this could really hurt their ability to capture the attention of retail investors. So although I think it's great for developers, I also see its glaring limitation, which is why I'm putting it as a new number four just below Stargaze. Now, our next project is poised to take advantage of the app chain trend, which is taking the crypto world by storm. This project is the only blockchain that is designed to support integrated apps, which combine the power of app chains with the scalability of smart contracts. If you didn't know, it's called Neutron. And in terms of things to like about it, well, first we gotta start with this Neutron token. Transaction fees make up Neutron's main source of revenue, with 25% of the fees going to the Cosmos hub, while the remaining 75% is burnt or sent to the reserve. This token burning mechanism makes Neutron deflationary and is amazing for both the community and the investors. But another thing I like is its replicated security mechanism, which gives it the same level of security as the formidable Cosmos hub. And that makes it much safer than most other smart contract platforms platforms out there. Also as a bonus, they have close ties to Lido, which explains why they've been able to bring Lido's staked ETH to Cosmos through Neutron. So all this explains why Neutron's ecosystem has been booming lately, with its top DEX, Astroport, growing its TVL from 26 million in October to over 100 million today. But wait, surely there must be some downside for Neutron, right? Well, unfortunately, there is. And the first one is the fact that Neutron is so early in its journey. Clearly, it has a lot going for it. But when we look closer at its ecosystem, it's actually still quite small. And it's not just competition from other ecosystems that Neutron has to worry about. It also has to look within the Cosmos ecosystem to its fierce rival, Osmosis. And when I say fierce, I do mean fierce, with some people even calling it an all-out war. The charge against Neutron is that it's simply riding the coattails of Osmosis, with accusations that its new product Nexus is simply a fork of Osmosis. So this is not a good look. And if it turns out that they're actually at war, then Neutron is clearly losing. Osmosis is nearly three times the size of Neutron and has much deeper liquidity, which puts it in a commanding position for now. But all things considered, I still think Neutron has great potential and is truly Cosmos aligned, which is why I'm putting it at the number three spot. Well, there you have it, my final Cosmos ecosystem rankings. But what I'm wondering is, would you personally move anything around? If so, let me know in the comments below. And if you haven't watched our Avalanche ecosystem video, then you can do so right here.